folks, welcome to Walking on the Ween Side. Today, on this special edition of It Matters Radio, I have songstress and health-oriented personality, Samantha Hart. And Samantha is coming to us from Vancouver, Canada, where, among other things, she is one of the major players in Planet Hemp. And Samantha, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ken. It's a pleasure. So we're talking about hemp today, mostly. Uh, and But we're not talking about getting high. <laughs> we're talking about all Ken, the I have to say, we are, we're talking about getting high on health, aren't we, Ken? High on health, yes. <laughs> Well, actually, here in, in uh, the Phoenix area, we have a store called, uh, or a, actually a chain called High Health. I don't know if they exist up in Vancouver. No, it doesn't. I love it, though. But I should give it to Paul. Yeah, but it's not about hemp. Uh, they're about, you know, all kinds of supplements and things. You're specifically uh, talking about the health benefits of the plant. And, of course, hemp is... Uh, one of these strange things, because I mean, it's been it's so useful and has so many so much value, and yet it has been fought against, especially in the United States. What what is the legal yeah. position up in in Canada about growing hemp? Well, you know, Ken, for over twenty years, it's been legal to grow industrial hemp in Canada. So there are over a hundred thousand. <laughs> industrial hemp like acres grown right now in Canada and our our family company Hemp Co and Planet Hemp is our retail line has about 16,000 acres right now 40, 40 to 45 different farmers grow mm -hmm. it is 100% legal what's illegal and seen as a as a drug is the CBDs so um, we cannot use the stock the leaves or the flower of the industrial hemp plant. It's illegal because it contains CBDs, cannabidiols, mm -hmm. um, which is actually in, in the States, it's legal for CBDs to be grown for medicine mm -hmm. and it's illegal for industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. So do you see some, some States are now legalized. I think, you know, slowly one by one, they're trying to get them all legalized, right. but it's sort of like, it's, you know, you know what I mean? Canada is you know, legal for industrial, illegal for CBD and medical cannabis, and then it's the opposite for the states where they're legal for, for CBDs, but illegal for industrial. So we, when we ship our hemp across, you know, it, uh, it has to make sure there's zero THC in our products. Well, of course, <clears throat> here in the states, one of the major reasons why industrial hemp was not allowed to be grown had nothing to do with the, the drug effect. It had to do with paper. Because, you got it. Yeah, because hemp, first, hemp is a major competition for yeah. for that's the thing that's really I mean not to be get get too controversial and, and I could go off my friend I tell you but please do <laughs> it's it, <laughs> well if this is a place to do it well, I'll tell you something mm -hmm. <laughs> you know really since the 30s it's really what happened was you know when the nylon revolution hit and plastic hit it was really one vote that was like no we we you know hemp is out and it is it's a plastic revolution and they suppressed um they suppressed hemp mm -hmm. and basically did a whole uh reefer madness you know propaganda scheme right. where they called it the devil's weed they said it was you know you know keep your kids away from it you're going to go crazy you're going to lose your mind and they, they really made it into it into even using hemp as a you know a fiber, they made it something that was bad or illegal. And they they smeared the name, you know, they smeared it with this, you know, the devil's weed or or you know something that you know, people are, should stay away from. So it it suppressed it for many many years. And as you know, right now, I don't know how aware you are about the hemp market or the cannabis market, but it is exploding mm -hmm. because people are finally waking up, as you know, Ken, and and they're starting to look at labels. They're starting to take care of their own health. People are wanting to get off of medications, and they know that hemp is part of that answer. Yeah, well, hemp hemp has a lot of wonderful uses, and, and I want to say also that I am a great fan of medical marijuana, uh, which is the second part of it. But you know, one of the things that I love about the whole hemp history story <clears throat> is that one of the major issues 
that came into play before the Second World War that is not particularly talked about is that, of course, in the Pacific Ocean, there was this buildup of navies, particularly the American Navy and the Japanese Navy, because the British, uh, well, the British Navy was there too. And there was this great concern. Now, one of the most important items for navies at that time was, mm -hmm. was rope. And rope, you got it. these heavy <laughs> ropes, these horses yep. were made from hemp. And so one of the biggest issues, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why the invasion of the Philippines took place so early on were, by the Japanese was that because we didn't grow our own hemp, because of this madness, we needed the, the hemp from the Philippines. And that, by the way, is one of the reasons why um, so many of the Philippine people ended up in the United States Navy during the war because there was this ongoing connection between naval stores and uh, history teaches it's just, us one thing. It's, I know, it, it, it makes you shake your head. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, really, it's really outstanding. But yeah, that's one of the major things that we lost, you know, all the canvas canvas you know like, and and the sails that they would use they would use for, out of hemp they would make it because it was the strongest uh, you know it was just one of the strongest fibers and still is on the planet and people start are starting to you know look back and go hey like what happened to hemp and and people are starting to go you know this is ridiculous and so thank god for those people and, and you know companies like our own company and other hemp companies are like hey you know we can let's do something about this let's bring it back yeah now, we're, we're going to be talking today about, about hemp as food, but you just mm -hmm. brought up fiber, and of course, you know, if you go online, and I don't know if your company sells this stuff, but uh, you can buy hemp-made um, sandals yep. and hemp clothes and things like that. Do you, does your company, sure, can you, does your company can Not you? yet, Ken. Not yet. Okay. Um there hasn't been anyone that's really uh, done anything with it in Canada, but I think I think it's going to be pretty soon. Like we're as a, as a public company, we're a public company, so we are in the Toronto uh, Stock Exchange. Um, our 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 ticker name is Hemp H E M P. So we got we got hemp. It was perfect. Great. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. But yeah, no, it's something we're we're looking at. Um, we have a, a, a decorticator now that we're going to be uh, you know using to make hemp bedding and hemp crete and so all those things are coming. All those mm -hmm. things are coming. It's just a matter of time. It's just because over the years, farmers literally had to burn the the mulch or um, you know rotate it back into the ground. Right. So it's it, it, we haven't really had the opportunity to use it because it's been illegal. Yeah. So really, only a certain amount of the plant is is available to you, and and which is too bad because it's a very fast growing plant. And it sure is. It's an easy to grow plant, especially if you're not trying to make the get the chemical effects, but just to grow the plant itself. It's it and be a yeah. boo or two of the easiest things to grow on earth. And two it is useful. yeah. Uh, one thing about yeah. hemp is, of course, that it does require uh, sunshine and water. You got it. Yeah. And no pesticides. Right. It doesn't require, because you, you nailed it, it grows so fast. It's a weed, right? Mm -hmm. It grows so fast. It shades up the ground. Not a lot of bugs want to hang out. You know, it cleans the soil. It cleans the air. Right. It grows very well in central Canada. You don't see a lot of industrial hemp uh, that's grown, you know, in the B.C. area. It's more towards, you know, the hot um, you know, climates around around Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, you know, those type of areas is where mostly the hemp and cannabis yeah. grow. Yeah, and it doesn't have to have a very long growing season. It's a, it doesn't. We can we can do one we can do one uh, one crop a year. So yeah. that's so that's between you know May and we we just harvest. You can believe it. They wait until it's frost, mm -hmm. uh, and then they harvest it because it, it um, it's something to do with the phytates where it locks it in. And, you know, hemp doesn't have any phytates, which is outstanding as a food um, source. But yeah, they wait till it, and then, so right now is harvest season for hemp. Uh -huh. Which yeah. is great because that also mm -hmm. means that it's not competing with other crops for a lot of labor. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, you got it. Now you have a whole bunch of recipes, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment of the show. But before we take a break, I just wanted to mention, folks, that the website you want to look for 
is planethemp.ca. And that's important, that CA, because that's up in Canada. And, you know, I don't even know if, if you could have that website on the Internet if you tried to register it here in the States. I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, you know, because it's the same oh, laws it, yeah. are so wonky. But, it's a global website. Yeah. We, we tried to get Temp, but a band already has a name, Planet Hemp, which is hilarious. Woo-hoo. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So it's Planet Hemp. .ca. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about all of the great stuff that you can learn about particularly health and well-being by going to that website and also some of the great health benefits that come from using hemp as a product. Hey guys, Samantha here with the Healthy Rockstar Program. Thank you so much for tuning in and being open to amplify your life through a holistic approach to your health. This free program was designed with your performance in mind to inspire you to be your very best by taking care of your body, mind, and spirit first. We all know that without our health, we simply don't have the energy or inspiration available to create the art that we love and want to share with the world. The Healthy Rockstar is a whole video-based support system that includes tips, tools, and tricks to set you up for success no matter where you are. So sign up below and tune into our community of like-hearted and minded people and start receiving great information on awakening the Healthy Rockstar that you are. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Walking on the Wean Side. So, Samantha Hart, let me ask you, how did you personally get involved in the hemp health business? <laughs> well, um, so well, uh, it's a fun story, actually, about 18 years ago. Uh, my brother, so this is a family business. There's my brother, my father, my sister, and myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brother and my father were looking to make a high-quality plant-based protein powder. Mm-hmm. So uh, when they were in Saskatchewan, they were meeting with a farmer that had the leanest little pigs that he'd ever seen. And my dad and my brother were like, what are you feeding your pigs? He says, you know, there's this new hemp farmer. He's growing hemp seeds for hemp seed oil, and he's pressing out this, this the oil out of the, out of the seed and what's left over is a cake. And this guy's been bringing us you know, bucket loads of this hip cake. And he said, these damn pigs, they can't gain any weight. And the hackles went up on my brother's neck. And he said, get me a sample of that. Do you mind? But he says, absolutely. You can take as much as you want. <laughs> so um, he went to a lab, got it analyzed. And the, the profile of hemp is, I have goosebumps, I don't even see that. But hemp has a profile where it is very similar to the human blood plasma. So even to just to digress slightly back to the World War II, I believe, is when they realized they could use hemp as a blood transfusion because it's so similar to our bodies. So hemp and coconut are two things you can use for replacement for blood in the meantime of having blood. It's very amazing. So it, that's when it happened. So we decided to take that cake and we made it into, you know, we marketed it across Canada. So we put it into a bag. And so we went up against the whey industry and the soy industry. So that was how I got involved. Um, and it was an, an amazing food for me to try because before eating that, you know, I was very, um, I wasn't well. I, I had adrenal exhaustion. I was pre-diabetic. I was completely addicted to sugar. I was not a very healthy person, had a very weak immune system. So, you know, um, hemp was really the catalyst that got me into the health industry. And I've, there's some, I've been, like, I'm a yoga instructor, I'm a hypnotherapist, I'm a health educator, you know, so it's really changed my life. I, I, I just, I absolutely, hemp has been my life for the last 18 years. And it's the greatest gift, uh, uh, you know, I could ever have imagined just helping people get healthy. That's really why, why, what I do. That's what I do. Mm. Yeah. Now, yeah. Before we, you, you gave a list of the things you do. You, you did leave one out. You're also, <laughs> you're also a musician. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, and it's, and it, the cool thing is, is that I have the healthy rockstar program where I've, I've been able to merge the two, you know, because I'm a health coach and I've sort of, I'm an empath as well. So people, you know, do 
tend to open up and share their, you know, what's going on with their bodies and their health and their emotions and things. And so, you know, hemp has always been a foundational thing that I've had when I do tour or, you know, when I'm traveling. Um, it's something that I always bring with me that keeps me healthy and strong while I, you know, while I'm doing my music. It's, I bring a smoothie with me and I, people, it, it's a sort of a, a joke with my band, you know, or people that I'm, that I'm musically with. I, I usually bring smoothies for people to have because it's just such a, beautiful food to feed the body and give your energy while you're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, share your music with the world. Uh -huh. So it is really kind of fun because you're a musician who uses hemp, but isn't getting high, you're getting healthy. <laughs> and I think that's you a wonderful, it. wonderful idea. I love that. I'm, that's my new slogan. Thanks, Ken. I'm going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, no, it's it's really a beautiful thing. I've seen a lot of people's lives change, Ken, over just like adding this simple, you know, we our bodies need very simple things. We need good fat. We need good protein. We need water. We need sunlight. We need greens. We need nutrients. We need minerals. Like there's very simple things. That you can, and when you give your body those things, you stop, you start to feel very different and you stop having cravings for things that are there to give you quick energy, like caffeine or sugar, mm -hmm. you know, uh, carbohydrates, muffins, things like that, you stop to lose, you start to, like, those things sort of fall away because your body's going, oh, okay, I'm getting the raw materials that my body needs to stay healthy. I don't need those things to get jacked up to get energy. It, it, it really does something to the, to the system when you start giving your body the right foods. Mm -hmm. So now, just... Make sure people know we had to look for the music, but because I didn't want to leave that on the set. Thank uh, you. You, you, spell, you, you spell your name S Y M E N T H A. So, folks, uh, you want to go to Samantha dot is that C A or is that C O M? It's dot com. Dot yeah, com. I did get that. I was very happy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, check out Samantha's music. It's, okay. Now, and and I guess we're going to have a little bit of. Of stuff like that, we hope, and on It Matters Radio. Uh, but in the meantime, today we're talking about Planet Hemp, which is your family business. And now people can buy that online, right? They can buy product from you in the States and in Canada, and I believe you even have a European. Uh, we sure do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, in the UK, we do have a, a CBD and hemp oil product that is legal to sell in the UK. We just can't, we don't get the CBDs from Canada, we get them <coughs> right. from Poland, but yeah. we get the hemp oil from Canada. So that's mm -hmm. the other company that we have is the UK mm -hmm. um, hemp, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the law. I know. Okay. So let's Don't go. get me started, right? <laughs> so if you go to Planet Hemp and you click on products, okay, there's a whole bunch of things here. One of them is hemp snacks, and I love that idea. What are some of the hemp snacks? A couple of the things that we have on there is uh, the super minis. So one is a cocoa heaven, and one's a forbidden fruit. So it just what we're finding with hemp is there's there's sort of two markets. There's the hippies and the vegetarians and the vegans and the health conscious people that know about hemp, and you know they'll just take the hemp seed or the oil and the protein. They'll just add it into their lifestyle because they know it's a beautiful, perfect protein and, and good fat for the body. But then there's those people that have been brainwashed or they have a bad idea about hemp, and they think there's THC, they think they're going to get high, or people that don't know about hemp or, you know, have never really tried it. Mm -hmm. And we, so we make snacks like that to make it easy and tasty for people to get hemp, you know, into their lives. You know, oh, wow, I'm eating hemp. It's a sort of a unique little, you know, bar. Um, we're making, um, we're going to make little food bars soon. Um, launching our burgers in, in Canada and in the States uh, in 2018. We're really thrilled about that. Just ways to make it easy and tasty for people to, to eat hemp, to get hemp into their lifestyle. Right, and, and to become aware. That's why I started with it, because these are things that people can try, and they're not going to feel quite so weirded out. <laughs> you got it. And then actually the interesting thing that happens, Ken, is when people start to eat hemp, eat, like I said before, it, it, your body starts to lose cravings. For things that hurt it, like for example, sugar or carbohydrates, caffeine, like in copious amounts, or drinking pop and things like that. The reason why we want things like that is because we're always starving for energy. We want quick energy. When our bodies remember, oh, I had that pop, 
or I had that muffin and I got a bunch of energy, your brain will go, okay, give me that, get me that. But when you start to give your body the foods that, you know, give you inner energy, then your body stops craving those other things. It, it really, that's the biggest thing that I know 20 years ago when I first started eating camp, my body changed in one week. Oh. One week. We did uh, a five-day challenge, and it's, you want to send people to the Happy Rockstar link. If you want to put it up at the end, people can have free five-day sample of the hemp seed and try it. That's the biggest thing. You, you take the food in your body, you try it, you experience it, and it, you can't really know until you try it. That's the thing, right? So you got to get in your body, let your body like start to clean and feed and heal itself from the hemp. Now, you, I take it at home, you just use the hemp seed and hemp oil just as you're cooking. Well, actually, so there's three products with the hemp seed, that, um, hemp, hemp heart, is what they know it by, um, hemp oil and hemp protein powder. So there's three ways. Mm -hmm. You really want to keep them raw. So you, I, you said the word cook, and you oh. can add it to cookies or muffins, and you can add it to things like I, I'm just in the middle of making a little uh, rice crispy treat, and I put raw cacao and a little bit of um, maple syrup, and I put hemp seeds in there, so it's a high-protein snack. Mm -hmm. You put pro good protein and sugar together, it sort of cancels it out mm -hmm. and makes it easier for the body to assimilate it and not spike your sugar levels. Right. So yeah, it's something that hemp is a foundational food in my life and when I teach people like with the Healthy Rockstar program or doing things, you know, where I'm doing demos, try to get a little hemp in your life every day. Right. Get it in your life every day and notice the difference. But you're, you mostly are using it in uncooked, in raw. Food. You got it. Yep. So I'll, I'll make a hemp seed milk every day. My partner and I, we have our, you know, we put a banana in there or you can put a little maple syrup, a little vanilla, blend up hemp seeds and water. It makes a beautiful white milk. It's a perfect dairy or non-dairy replacement and you're getting 11 grams of protein per three tablespoons of hemp seeds. So there's more protein in hemp seeds than there is in a piece of meat. Like in your average piece of meat. So it's really outstanding. And the body starts to notice it because meat is very hard to digest. Whereas hemp is very bioavailable. It's raw, very similar to the human blood plasma. So your body goes, oh, wow. Your liver uses it very quickly as a main tool for the 650 functions that it has. Okay. And we're going to be right back to talk a little bit more with Samantha. But first, we have to take this break. So what's the difference between hemp and pot? Hemp and marijuana, though they have different qualities, people often use both of these terms interchangeably. So do you know the difference between the two? Hemp and marijuana belong to the same species of plant, cannabis sativa. Cannabis is believed to be one of the oldest domesticated crops, first cultivated 10,000 years ago in what is now Taiwan. These early cultivators realized that there were two different kinds of cannabis plants. One was tall, strong, and durable, while the other contained flowers that had a medicinal effect when smoked. Over centuries of cultivation, the durable plant became what is now known as hemp, and the latter medicinal plant became known as cannabis, or marijuana. Hemp contains little to no THC, which means that you can't get high from smoking it. Marijuana plants can contain 5 to 20% THC on average. Until the 20th century, hemp plants were harvested for their strong fibers, and 80% of the world's textiles and fabrics were made of hemp. Of all the paper made in the world before 1883, 75 to 90% was hemp based. When European settlers first came to America, they were required to grow hemp. Virginia, Massachusetts, and Connecticut had mandatory hemp growing laws in the early 1600s. Hemp was considered legal tender in America up until the 1800s, and you could even pay your taxes with hemp. But because hemp and marijuana come from the same plant, the industrial cultivation of hemp was banned with the passing of the Controlled Substances Act of 1970, which classified cannabis as a Schedule I drug. American companies still use hemp in their products, but due to the prohibition of cannabis, companies import $500 million worth of hemp into the U.S. every year. Today, hemp is used to produce paper, environmentally friendly plastic substitutes, fiberboards, clothing, and much more. In 2014, President Obama signed the Farm Bill, which clarified the legal difference between hemp and marijuana to pave the way for farmers to grow hemp while pot remains illegal. 
Cannabis plants containing under 0.3% of THC can legally be defined as hemp, while cannabis plants containing more THC are defined as marijuana. This year, a bipartisan group of senators plans to reintroduce the Industrial Hemp Farming Act before Congress, which would remove the Schedule I classification of hemp, allowing American farmers to return to growing what was once one of the country's most vibrant crops. Now, if only the government would figure out legalizing marijuana next. And welcome back to Walking on the Ween Side. How I had a question. We've been talking about the health benefits. Uh, how much research is being done to support these kind of claims? Do you have health professionals on your staff as advisors? How, how are you going about that? Well, you know, what we've seen over the years is that's one of the biggest things people have had a problem with is they don't see a doctor in a lab coat that's saying, you know, eat this as a whole food, as a, as a, as a, as a supplement or as a nutritional food for you to get well. So that's one thing that, that people do like to look for. They look to, to trust their doctors and things like that. But what we're seeing over the years is there's more and more people. Dr. Oz, for example, I bring him up just because that's what came to mind, is that he's a huge advocate of hemp. And as soon as he said, he, he, he started using it and sharing it, just like he, she shares chia seeds and he shares lots of nutritional information on, on his show to people, you know, he started talking about hemp and then, you know, hemp all of a sudden became this very hot thing because people started using it and feeling a difference. Right. So there's lots of I mean, natural paths and some doctors for sure are now, you know, you know, I have a doctor and she she's also an Ayurvedic practitioner on the side and so she tells me, you know, when I go when I'm not feeling well, she'll tell you to eat turmeric. You know, mm -hmm. she's not putting me I don't I don't take medication I haven't taken medications for many, many years. But, you know, whole foods heal our bodies and you know, oh it, it's happening more and more that more professionals are getting involved saying, Yeah, hemp is hemp is an amazing food for the human body to get yourself well. So as part of our math, I mean we have um, you know, my my brother who is really that he's the president and CEO of our company. Um, you know, we work with naturopaths, healers, many different people that, that understand and share how important and amazing hemp is for the human body. Yeah. But as far as doctors, you know, it's something that, you know, we don't have any doctors on staff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and there isn't, there isn't a, a board of uh, hemp company, a, a conglomerate of hemp companies working together to get that research done? No, it's sort of individuals all over the world that are sort of pooling together to create their own evidence and, you know, bring in more professionals because, you know, that's what people, a lot of people in the mass market, they need a doctor or someone, you know, that looks official to be like, hey, eat this. Because mostly we're, we're programmed that way. We're not really programmed to, you know, you go to nature to trust our intuition and heal ourselves, right? It's just okay. that's the dichotomy. That's an interesting <laughs> dichotomy you just raised because, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the, the allopathic medical model is go to the expert, have them do something to you. And there is this other model of health, which, as you said, is based on nature and awareness of nature. And I think that one of the most fascinating things that has happened in my lifetime, and you mentioned turmeric as one example, but that we are learning that so many of these <clears throat> spices and, and things that people did really work quite well. One of the problems that often happens is that you get something that works well, and then the that allopathic model takes over and they say, oh, we got to change it. We got to make it work better. And mm -hmm. so the next thing you know, instead of, say, soaking willow bark in warm water and drinking it, that tea, uh, we're getting a processed aspirin, and which may not be quite as healthy for us. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, that's the, the the joke, I guess you could say, is humans playing God, if you will, because, you know, we take nature and we try to, like, change it up and, and, and play that role of trying to make it better, trying to make it better than nature, which is, it's, it's hilarious, you know, <laughs> you know, but if you think, look at all medications or, you know, the, you know, all the, all the sort of, you know, um, opiates and things that, that people are on, you know, it's, they, they, they usually are coming 
you know, the originator is nature, is mother nature, Gaia. You know, she's the one that's like, okay, we created this. And man's like, okay, well, can't be that easy. We've got to switch it up, put it to a pill. You, know? All right. you just, you just, I don't know if you did it intentionally or inadvertently, but you raised a, a wonderful point by your reference to mother nature, <clears throat> Gaia, she, uh, and... I think that one of the problems we have is that in most societies, maybe all societies except for uh, Master Chef or something like that, uh, cooking is primarily historically been done by women. <clears throat> and that means that food preparation has always been lesser because we know men are better, right? <laughs> Don't get me started, Ken. I'm I just you. wanted to get you started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the medicine women, the medicine woman, right? That's, you know, but, you know, but we want to be free and we want, we don't want to be, you know, suppressed into a role where we don't feel that we're, you know, put into a box or, but it's our natural tendency, right? To, you know, the female is the nurturer, the feminine, the sacred feminine is, you know, it's the provider of the love and the care and the nurturing. It's just, it's just part of, it's just part of the, part of it, you know? Yeah. But on the other hand, the male is denies the, the power of the female, and, and that's the other part. And and that's and finding that finding a way <clears throat> to recognize that, I think that's part of what's going on. I like to think that our society, at least at least here in the states, and I would guess Canada or in, in Europe, uh, that we are becoming more aware of the feminine. Uh, but for a long time, we weren't. I think what is interesting to me, because I'm, my background is in the social sciences, is that in many societies, of course, women were not considered the weaker sex or the, the lesser sex. And in many Native American and first people, as you call them up there, um, <clears throat> that the women uh, held. They, they they held the truth. They held the, the wisdom and, and the, the, the traditions much more than the men did. And, of course, they often were the healers. And it's interesting how the movies, the, the, you get the medicine man, but if you go to the Native American communities, very often, while a medicine man may perform certain rituals, it is the healing woman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that deeply. And I love that you're speaking into it. And, you know, just to bring it back to hemp, the way I look at hemp is like, it's, it's such a funny thing, because, you know, our world, if you look out at our system, the matrix, what's going on is, you know, it's not a healthy thing. And um, it, it just it's so it's so divine that as people are waking up, that so is the awareness of the hemp plant. So I've, I, 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 I say to people, you know, hemp is the perfect plant for the human being that we need. Because there's over 42,000 different uses of hemp, right? I mean, come on, right? There's no there's no mistake that the government is wanting to hide it, suppress it, keep it in the shadow, call it a devil's weeds. Because it's something that we need as human beings. So as, and so as the women are waking up and going, wow, I have power and, and, you know, I understand who I am and we're, you know, there's a bit of an anger under there, a little bit of a fire, right? We've been suppressed. We've been burned. We've been seen as weaker, lesser. Come on, right? I got goosebumps, right? So that's what's happening is the sacred feminine is rising and so is the rising of the sacred plant. It, and it makes such sense. And if you, I don't know if you know much about the industry of medical marijuana, but they they stress out the plant to, for it to create THC. They, they stress it out as a female. They put it under pressure to, so it makes more, because everyone wants this high THC, right? But, but what we need to do, it's the same thing that's happening with the dairy industry, and you know, it's, 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 it's the same sort of thing. But as people are waking up going, no, we want CBDs. We want hemp food. We need this in our bodies. That is, that's part of the feminine is rising, going, no, this is our medicine. We need it. So... So I, I love that you brought that up. I love that you spoke into that because it is there's a real magic that's happening with the rise and awakening of this plant as we awaken. Yeah, and I, I want to just add, you know, while we're talking today about planet hemp and, and hemp specifically, it isn't just that one source of one wonderful food, one wonderful plant. And more and more what we're discovering 
in this growing awareness is, is there are many plants. You mentioned turmeric, which is a wonder. You mentioned coconuts. Uh, I mentioned, you got it. I mentioned bamboo earlier, not for food, but for construction. You and, got it. And there are so many. And these traditional, wonderful, natural possibilities. And one of the things I, I just want to mention and, and take back to one of the things you said about the taught, taught us today about hemp is that all over the European dominated world, like the States, Canada, you know, the use of these chemicals to control nature, pesticides, and in the process, defoliating and destroying the natural plants that are there. And it's horrifying to me. And one of the things you mentioned about hemp is it doesn't require any pesticides. Well, you know, if you look at what we're doing, and this is really one of the most horrifying things to me, is we're taking foods that traditionally and historically have been very, very valuable to people, like corn. corn originally, corn was a wonderful yes. source of nutrients and, and, and nutrition. And now we have so changed it yeah. that it, yeah. it, it becomes a source of carbohydrates yeah. and nothing you else. You nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. It's, it's, and that's something the same thing you did with soy, the soy industry, mm -hmm. um, you know, the meat industry, if you will, the dairy industry, um, the corn industry. All these things are, you know, they're bastardized really and you know GMO um, they're sprayed they are you know with the soy industry you know, you know most of the soy on the planet is being fed to a animal agriculture like you know cattle that are they're not even supposed to eat this kind of stuff right. their bodies can't digest it so their bodies are constantly producing gas that is, is you know helping destroy our planet isn't yeah. it perfect right so it's all this bizarre thing that's happening and and the thing that people don't look at is okay. If I'm eating meat that's that that is full of antibiotics because the, the animals are just not doing well because they're eating all this crappy yeah. food, they're under terrible conditions. Then you know, their bodies stop being able to. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the mm. whole the whole cycle. And I guess one of the things is I, I you know I often hear women I'm good at science. Well, that's not really true. I mean, that's just been a stereotype. But in a very real way, I think there's this reason for that stereotype, which is that women inherently want to nurture nature and understand nature and connect to what's natural, and men want to control. We are busy. Oh, Hurling you said our, it can not be. Our this imaginary <laughs> thunderbolts of science at the world, while women are trying very hard to coax the health yeah. up from the from the world. I, I, I love that you're speaking into that, and it's and you know if you know if there's time to talk about this, it's it's really what my my music it just to sort of digress slightly. It's the very thing that I I sing about is just getting back to nature, getting back to our hearts, getting back to our bodies, getting back to self love, getting back to taking care of our soul that's what i that's my what my music is about it's so interesting that you say that you know and, and teaching people how to take care of themselves and you know trust your heart and get back to nature that's why i love hemp it's a solution food you know when it comes to soy and dairy and i'm like for joining me today on walking on the wean side and discussing this stuff Hey Andy, did you know there are lots of ways to make a house? You bet, Chuck. You can use mud, bricks, tree branches, or even a really old material called hemp. Hi, Planet Echo. My name's Greg. Welcome to my house. It's made of hemp. Come on in. And so every wall in the house is made of hemp straw. And here you can see it. This is what's called a truth window. You can see the walls are really thick. They're actually the thickness of a traditional bale of straw. There's a lot of air pockets in those hemp straw bales and air is a really good insulator. And so the first thing you'll notice is a double envelope. And what that means is we have an outer envelope wall and that protects the inner envelope, which is the hemp straw bale. So it makes it cooler in the summer and way easier to heat in the winter. And a lot of the wood that we've used in here is reclaimed wood. 
It's, in other words, it's recycled, so we haven't had to cut down any trees. So this counter is reclaimed elm, the floors are reclaimed hemlock, and then we've put our hemp oil wood finish on, and that oil goes deep into the wood to help protect it. You see, Andy, hemp straw for building, hemp oil to make the wood shine. Is there anything you can't do with hemp? Hmm, how about heating the house? You probably have heating vents like this in your house, but we use hemp oil to heat. We make biofuel from hemp oil. So hemp oil biofuel is carbon neutral. That means it's super clean burning. And the other thing is, we don't have to drill into the earth to get our oil. We squeeze the oil from the plants that we grow. Hemp is amazing, Andy. I heard you can even eat it. So I guess you want to see what's in my fridge. So here we have our omega-3 salad dressings. There's a Caesar dressing, there's honey Dijon, there's a balsamic vinaigrette. Here's our hemp oil. Drizzle that on pizza, put it on your noodles, it's awesome. So we use hemp in just about everything around here. Wow, Chuck, I had no idea you could do so much with one crop, including building a really green house. Awesome. Okay, you've seen my hemp walls, my recycled wood, my truth window, and all the other products made from hemp. But I gotta hop back in my biodiesel tractor and get to work. See you later, Planet Echo.